I'm a simple man. I see that Pikmin 2 is available on a new platform, and I buy Pikmin 2 on said platform. I bought Pikmin 2 for Switch, 100%ed it, and wanted to make a mini review about it. Pikmin 2 picks up right after the events of Pikmin 1. Oma returns to Hokitate just to hear that his company is going under. After hauling away the SS Dolphin, the owner of that came to 10,100 Pokos. Then makes Olimar drop his bottle cap souvenir that he grabbed for his son. The Hokitate ship takes the bottle cap and notes that it is worth 100 Pokos. The president of Hokitate, Frank, decides to send Olimar back to the distant planet, along with another employee named Louie. The second story beat involves Olimar repaying the debt and going home. Just to realize that he left behind Louie, the president of Hokitate Freight orders Olimar to go back to find Louie, as well as to grab more treasures. Luckily, he doesn't have to go alone, though. The president will follow. The core gameplay is very similar to the original Pikmin. The player can take control of 100 plant-like creatures named Pikmin at a time. These Pikmin can carry treasures, fight enemies, be thrown to higher ledges, break walls, and build bridges. Red, blue, and yellow Pikmin make their return. The fire-resistant red Pikmin and the water-resistant blue Pikmin are more or less the same, but not the yellow Pikmin. Yellow Pikmin lost their bomb rock ability, but now they are immune to electricity. This is important because electricity is an instant kill hazard. Most other hazards aren't as deadly. They can still be thrown higher than other Pikmin. Each day is 13 and a half minutes. The player will need to round up all the Pikmin at the end of the day to make sure they don't get decimated by the enemies that lurk at night. The Pikmin have three stages of maturity again, with flower Pikmin being the most useful because they are fast. You can have up to 100 Pikmin at a time. Does this all sound familiar? Let's just get into the new stuff. Three new Pikmin types were added. Purple Pikmin are easily the best Pikmin in the entire franchise because they do massive damage with their slam attack that can also stun enemies. They also weigh and carry 10 times other Pikmin, are immune to wind and panic, and are pretty much just OP. White Pikmin are smaller Pikmin that run wicked fast, are immune to poison, can find hidden treasure in the ground, and can poison enemies if eaten. These two can only be grown by throwing other Pikmin into Candy Pop Buds. Candy Pop Buds are only found in caves, which we'll get into in a minute. Bulbin are a particular type of Pikmin that are a pikmin Bulborb hybrid. These are found in only three caves in the entire game. The player will find a parent Bulbin with 10 juvenile Bulbin if the total Pikmin amount doesn't exceed 100. When the parent is killed, the juvenile Bulbin will start to panic. If the player whistles them, it will calm them down and they will join their squad. These guys are incredible because they are immune to every single hazard. They can't be brought out of caves though. That's a bummer. Before hitting the caves, I want to talk about some other things that Pikmin 2 added. There are two captains this time around. This can be helpful if you want to break a wall with one captain and explore with the other, for example. At the same time, though, this was kind of cool, especially at release. But after Pikmin 3, this feels like an afterthought. It has its moments of usefulness for sure, but without being able to move the captain that you're not currently being, it ends up not feeling that helpful. I guess you could make the other captain fall asleep with a five-man knapsack and have a Pikmin carry them to the ship or onions, though. Two new sprays were introduced. Ultra Spicy and Ultra Bitter Sprays. One spray can be obtained by taking ten of its berries to the ship, or by finding a spray puddle after initially discovering the spray. I love the glitch you obtain two sprays from one puddle. It's so good. Basically, you have to push the idle captain into it, then run into it with the other captain. The Ultra Spicy Spray will make the Pikmin hyper. Their attacks and overall speed will be faster. This can be very useful in clearing annoying enemies, as well as knocking down electric or dark walls. Just use caution when using this, though, as Pikmin will die from hazards more quickly. The spray will last for 40 seconds. I personally think that this spray was a great addition to the gameplay loop. The other spray, though... I'm a bit torn, to be honest with you. The Ultra Bitter Spray will cover an enemy in stone. This will basically make them defenseless, and you can just kick their ass as they stand there and take it. If they are killed in this state, their bodies will disintegrate, and they will leave behind a nectar puddle. It can feel nice to use this on an annoying enemy like Gatling Grank or Bull Bear, because they'll come back to life after some time. It does feel kind of cheap, though. Almost like an automatic win button. On one hand, it does feel nice to let this rip on an annoying asshole, but I'm still kind of torn. It is worth noting that these are pretty limited unless you spend time farming them. I don't hate these with a passion like some other people, but I do kind of get it. Other than those couple of things, it's pretty much just the caves. As the player explores, they'll come across a hole. They'll jump into the hole with their current Pikmin squad. They'll be tasked with going through various sub-levels while killing enemies and grabbing treasures. There is no time limit to speak of, and the time of day freezes when the captains jump in the cave. I kind of like this, because the above ground focuses on time management, while the underground focuses on Pikmin, or should I say, resource management. At the end of the cave, there will be a boss. I love how they just went wild with bosses' ideas here. There's the Empress Bullblax that will roll over Pikmin, a giant mechanical spider called the Mad legs that will shoot at Pikmin, the Water Reef will roll over Pikmin with his rollers, the Emperor Bulblax from Pikmin 1 makes a return, there are just so many and it's so cool. I guess one caveat here is that there are a couple of repeats, and some of them are spiders, so they can feel a bit samey. Caves make up a huge portion of Pikmin 2's playtime. If I had to throw a percentage out there, I feel like it's pretty close to a 70-30 split. There are 14 caves and the later ones get up to 15 sublevels deep. 
Some stand at our Holy Heroes, which acts like a boss rush cave. Submerge Castle, which will have the Water Wraith harass the player if they take too long in the sub-level. And Glutton's Kitchen, which is just infested with bread bugs and it has a very fun final boss. In general, I like the caves, but they got their own issues that I'll get into later. Another cool thing about the caves is the fact that most of them will give the player a treasure that upgrades the captains. This ranges from elemental immunity, taking less damage from enemy attacks, increasing the captain's speed, increasing the whistle range, allowing the captain to pluck Pikmin with the whistle. I really like how the captain themselves gain abilities throughout the game. The only ship part that enhanced gameplay in the original Pikmin was the whistle radar. The Piglopedia deserves a shout out. I spent way too much time looking at these entries in here when I was younger. I loved throwing Pikmin carrots at the enemies to see how they would react, using the Ultra Bitter Spray on them. Good times, man. Almer's entries will be practical and will tell the player about the creature's biology. Louis' notes will be on how to eat the creatures. Nice. The player can also look at all the treasures in the treasure hoard. Omar will give his thoughts on each one, and the Hokatate ship will come up with a sales pitch. The new and improved challenge mode is also a very welcomed addition. The devs handcrafted 30 different challenges and answered the question, what would caves be like if they had time limits? This is a neat spin on caves, and I honestly kind of wish they had time limits in the campaign after playing the challenge mode. The player will still have the certain amount of Pikmin, Ultra Bitter Sprays, Ultra Spicy Sprays, Time Limits, and Sub-Levels to beat. I won't go over all of them, as that would be pretty excessive, but some highlights are beating two Water Raids in Bully Den, getting acquainted with Bulbin and Greenhold, trying to survive a triple bull bear attack in subterranean lair. There are a few other good ones, but I don't want to spoil it. This can be done with another player, which is great. If the player completes every single stage without losing a Pikmin, they'll unlock a cool cutscene called Louie's Dark Secret. I won't spoil that either, but it is quite humorous. Getting it perfect in all the challenge levels took me roughly two and a half hours, but it'll obviously take way longer for newer players. The two-player battle can be immense fun if you have someone who can take it seriously, but not too seriously. It's fun screwing over your friend's Pikmin squad with boulders. I didn't dabble with it too much when playing this port specifically, but I played it a decent bit back in the day. It's a great addition to the series, and it's a whale of a time if you got a good buddy around. The music is top-notch like in the first game, and overall, it actually looks a decent bit better. While I kind of miss the darker and more rushed nature of Pikmin 1, Pikmin 2 goes for a more humorous and laid-back kind of feel, and I still think that's cool. Some of the dialogue gets me laughing. The Hokitate ship has its moments, Louie is such a piece of shit that you gotta love him, and the president is just simply a stellar character as well. The game can still be dark at times too, but I honestly kind of like its lighter nature to fare. So, I have three major problems with Pikmin 2 and this port in general. I'm placing this one first because it's just so goddamn stupid. You can't skip cutscenes. Why though? You could in the GameCube version, so why not here? Every time you head up to a cave for the first time, every time you discover something new, the game just feels like it's necessary to pump the brakes completely. The reason why this annoys me so much is because, well, this is a re-release. Older fans are going to play this because they're getting nostalgic for it. Take it from someone who has played Pikmin 2 dozens of times through already. I don't want to stop and hear about how Nectar works from the ship, damn it. The second major problem is about the game itself. The balancing is kind of whack. Purple Pikmin straight up can demolish pretty much everything. The only enemies that I hesitate to use Purple Pikmin on are the ones that use electricity in some way. Other hazards are fair game though. Fiery Blowhogs, Caustic Dweevils, Doodlebugs. Hell, if I'm brave enough, I'll even still kill Anno Beetles with Purple Pikmin. It's just so much faster. Red Pikmin got screwed over royally because they pretty much feel useless. They're nice to have around for Fiery Bowblaxes, I guess, but even those can be killed by Purple still. Same with the Fiery Geysers around the map. There's plenty of water in the game, so Blue Pikmin still get used. The White Pikmin are the only ones that can destroy poison pipes because they're completely surrounded by poison, and there are electrical walls for Yellow Pikmin. But Red Pikmin, man, they just can't catch a break. Yeah, you could argue that it's my playstyle that's the issue, but if the game gives you a tool that is as broken as Purple Pikmin, I'm going to abuse it. You also unlock them absurdly early, like day two early. Speaking of broken tools... The Ultra Bitter Spray is a tad strong. I honestly feel like the devs weren't that happy with it because it doesn't return to Pikmin 3, while the Ultra Spicy Spray does. The fact that you can just render any enemy completely defenseless is a bit... strong. Like I said earlier, it takes time to farm them though. I've always been kind of mixed about their addition of Pikmin 2. On one hand, it really is nice tool for the annoying enemies like fiery bullblaxes, gaddling groinks, bull bears, but it still feels pretty cheap, you know? We're not done with balancing yet. The later caves get a bit ridiculous. The difficulty comes from annoying shit like bomb rocks falling from the sky, bull bears falling from the sky, weird enemy spawns in general. It just feels a bit cheap at times. I put this on myself for doing a no death run, but the number of times that I had to reset just because of some annoying bullshit was a decent amount. I actually have no problems with electricity because it's easy to scout out, and it keeps the purple Pikmin at least a little bit in check. Sometimes the best method is just to take a captain and scout out the level by themselves, but I just don't find that fun. It takes a while to do. Again though, that's the trade-off you could argue. I could just rush in there with all my Pikmin, but if I lose one, you bet your ass I'm going to reset. Doing so would cost me a lot of time. I've seen some people argue that Pikmin 2 enemies and traps are crazy because, well, you are. You have access to purple Pikmin and ultra bitter sprays. When you look at it like that, 
damn, is my whole argument just invalid now? My third main problem with Pikmin 2 involves the caves again. A lot of them feel pretty similar and can blend. I'm typing this as I just finished the game, but some of these caves are just downright not memorable. A lot of them use similar theming, enemies, layouts. There's a strong chance that you show me a screenshot and ask, what cave is this from? Unless if it's one of the few distinct ones, like say Glutton's Kitchen, I probably wouldn't get it right, honestly. The other part is that the caves can feel like a slog at times. Yeah, jump down the hole, wait for the text to show up, and do that for every single sublevel. You can't skip the Pikmin returning treasures either, and keep in mind, there are 201 treasures, so you're going to see this 201 times. According to the end results, it took me roughly 9 hours to get all the treasures. I wonder if that's just in-game time because my OBS recordings indicate that I took 11. Sure, I have a couple of resets in there, but I wonder how much time was just spent waiting for the ship to haul in treasures. Like the Switch port of Pikmin 1, this is based on the new play control version of Pikmin 2. The only way that I can really tell is because the game isn't full screen, the captain's silhouettes are now colored, and it uses the new swarm. What does the Switch version add, though? Looking at the Pikipedia? It ain't much. Obviously, the controls have been updated for the Joy-Cons. The right stick can now be used for the camera, while swarming can be activated by holding down L and then using the right stick. I'm not the biggest fan of this. It can be hard in tight corners to remember to do this. I really prefer just using the C-Stick alone to swarm. I thought that the old camera controls were fine, to be honest with you. To lie down, the player has to push in the right stick. This is annoying because they are basically forcing you to not use a GameCube controller. I use the Switch Pro controller instead. There should have been multiple control options, with classic GameCube controls being one of them. Especially because the Switch has the GameCube controller adapter, this just feels like a missed opportunity. If we're talking actual content, the biggest thing is the fact that the branded treasures have been changed. I won't lie when I say that was part of the appeal of Pikmin 2. Just wandering around and finding a Duracell battery was funny to me. Now we have in-game brands, which is still cute enough, but it does lose some punch. It is interesting to see how many treasures were changed at least. The cursor is based on the GameCube version's cursor, but the player can turn on motion controls for throwing and calling Pikmin. I don't like it. It's not nearly as good as the Wii version controls, so I just use the standard one. You also can't throw Pikmin farther anymore with the running start. That's stupid. I think they did this because the cursor goes farther than it did in the GameCube version. This version runs at 1080p when docked, 720p when playing in handheld, and both run at 30fps. It really is as basic as a port could be. That's Pikmin 2. If you're curious about the Pikmin franchise, please give this one a shot. Pikmin 2 is much meatier than Pikmin 1, so I think that the price for this one isn't too bad. This will take newcomers at least 20 hours for 100% run, and the challenge mode can definitely add some extra time as well. I'm not exaggerating when I say this is one of my favorite games of all time. I really hope enough people are interested in this, and Pikmin can become a bigger franchise for the big N. 7 out of 7 for sure.